Hello everybody, Andrew Hutchings here, and this video is about what it's like dieting for a bodybuilding competition. Well, what it's like how I am currently dieting. Now, I've made videos talking about like how I'm dieting. Quick recap, for the most part, I've been going keto. Not because carbs make you fat, but because I saw... Well, I had about eight and a half weeks, well, I I still have about three weeks, but in total, from when I decided to diet down to the day of the bodybuilding competition, there was about eight and a half weeks. So I had to do it quickly, and I decided carbs are extra unnecessary calories. I need protein. I don't need carbs. So carbs can go. And also I found that when I didn't eat carbs, I didn't crave carbs, which meant I didn't overeat carbs or sugar, like simple sugars. So that was good as well. So yeah, I've mostly been eating like keto and then I'll throw in a day or two of eating some carbs every three to five, to, yeah, every three to five days. Uh, and then I did some intermittent fasting. Again, not because it's better, just because it, it's just how it was working well for me. But overall, and I can certainly feel everything having built up to now, it's very exhausting to not eat enough. Like, I, I'm not a complainer, so like, other people are like, oh yeah, it's so difficult not to eat, oh, it's like the hardest thing ever, like, no, and it's not just about, like, externally to other people complaining, like, I don't complain to myself very much, like, it's just not how I think. Like, I'm actually the opposite, I'm like, whoa, this is actually not that hard, I'm not very hungry. Now, I'm not saying that I'm starving myself, I'm not, because that's not the goal. The goal is to lower body fat, not lower muscle which means you have to eat enough protein. So yes, I'm certainly not starving. If I were starving, I would not look good on stage at a bodybuilding competition. I am selectively trying to lower body fat, which means calorie deficit, but not a protein deficit. That way, I have the necessary protein for my muscles, but when it comes to energy, my body has to pull it from body fat rather than from food, which means my physique is looking good, but I just do not have much energy. Uh, falling asleep a lot, um, not wanting to talk very much, because, you know, that does take energy. Uh, walking isn't bad, like, I do have good energy for walking around. A big change, which I noticed actually immediately. Now, I have to tell you, since it's like a big major part of it, it is like rapid decrease in sex drive. So normally I have a gigantic sex drive, like <laughs> problematic gigantic. Uh, and like w really within days of cutting my calories down, to like, I'd say on average 1,500 calories per day. And keep in mind that I'm an active person I'm going to the gym most days, walking around. I have a lot of muscle mass. But within days of that, it's like I still have the habit of thinking about sexual things, but I don't have the interest anymore. So whereas it used to be like driven by my body's urges, which built habits, like the urges built physical acting out of the urges into habits. So now it's like I still have the habits, but they're empty. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe if you're like an alcoholic and then like you lose your interest to drink, but you're still used to going out with your friends and drinking, but now like you don't want to go out, but you're used to going out, so like it feels weird, because like you feel like you should be going out drinking, but you don't actually want to. So that's how I am with uh, sexual stuff. Like I am 
I'm still attracted to girls. I still think about it, but it's like, just not feeling it. Like, not that. Body doesn't care for it. It's more interested in, uh, I guess, getting food, although I'm not that hungry. Although, I do have to admit that I just uh, broke my diet. Uh, so I had uh, about three alcoholic drinks with vodka and diet Sprite and lime. And I had uh, peanut M&Ms. And I had some other chocolates. And popcorn, but popcorn's not very bad. Like, it's 100 calories for, or I think it's 140 calories for a whole bag. And it's not like I had a, a party-sized bag of peanut M&Ms. And it's not like I had a bunch of chocolates. But still, I probably got, like, I don't know, 300 calories from peanut M&Ms, 300 calories from alcohol. Let's just say 100 calories from other chocolates. Uh, that's, I, mean, I didn't eat that much earlier today. Like I had five eggs, some granola, because I decided I'm gonna stop keto. Um, and then I had a Sloika Kudurgoy. Um, it's like, I don't know, similar nutrition to having a croissant with a little bit of jelly. Oh, and I had some cottage cheese. So yeah, eggs, granola, cottage cheese, sloika. I don't know, I just find the word sloika kind of funny. But it's very tasty and they have them at my university. And especially if they're fresh and warm, they're very, very good. Like sometimes if it's not fresh, I might even just throw it away. Because I'm not a starving kid in Africa and if it's fresh, I, I might get an extra one, but if it's not fresh, it's like, why do I, like it's good, but maybe I don't need these calories. I just feel very lucky that like this very good pastry is at my university, like, I don't know, 40 cents. They're fresh sometimes. Just like I was very happy and grateful when my university cooks this really good chicken that has tomato and eggplant on top. But when they have this other chicken that has like, I don't know, some sort of gunk on top, like high fat, low nutrition, like stuff you would squeeze out of something along with like some cheese or, I, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's not the healthiest and it's higher in calories and it just overall doesn't taste as good. But when they have this chicken that has the tomatoes with the eggplant on top, very good. Like, I would gladly go to a restaurant to get that. Um, yeah, I like that there's, it's not so, I don't go to it as often, but there's a grocery store near my MMA place, and they've got this great chicken with some cheese and something else inside the cheese. Like, it's very good. I'm not going to eat too much of it while dieting, because cheese does have more calories than no cheese. Not that cheese is horrible, but if you're really trying to cut calories, you don't eat the cheese. But yeah, you can get a few of those chicken breasts for a few dollars. Back to how I feel dieting. Uh, yeah, low energy, low sex drive. Oh, and when I go to go to sleep at night, when I was doing the keto stuff, I lay down and then I get very hot and a little bit sick feeling. It's it's interesting because like, I don't know if it's just like the f shifting of the food in my stomach because I have noticed over the course of years that like if I eat anywhere near the time, like within an hour or less, I don't know. But if I eat at night and then when I lay down, it seems to shift the food in my stomach and intestines and then it digests differently and it produces more gas. I don't know, I just, my stomach feels bigger after I've laid down for a few minutes. But recently, I get really hot and a little bit nauseous. Like, it 
if I go to sleep on a stomach full of vegetables and maybe a little bit of meat, or even if there is a decent amount of meat or eggs, but my, if my calories for the day were really low, and my body wants calories, but instead of calories, it's got cucumber and tomato, which don't give it calories, I feel sick. And then I can't sleep for 30 minutes to an hour because like I'm feeling kind of sick and hot. Oh, my knees. I notice this actually very quickly. So almost as quickly as the sexual stuff, my, I wasn't sure if it was the diet at first or if I just like maybe I did some heavier squats than usual. But I noticed my knees, like, you know, they're just not feeling like so good. Like they're aching. They just feel like they've taken a beating and they're just not recovering. I think that actually the fat in my knees has decreased the fat and the fluid and now they get damaged easier and they're just not as padded not as lubricated and like today and yesterday like when you cross the streets here you have the option oftentimes to go under or to go across and usually it's like, I don't want to wait for the light to change, so I'll just walk under. But my knees actually are not feeling very good. And in fact, I slightly tore the uh, tendon on the top of one of my knees. Yes, I don't remember the name of the tendon. I think it might be the patellar tendon. Don't remember it right now. That's another thing. Not that I ever knew the knee tendon super well, but mental function also does not do too good when you're not eating much. But as for my knees, like I am opting not to go on stairs right now because going up and down, mostly going upstairs, hurts my knees. And I slightly tore, I think it's the patellar tendon. Uh, so yeah, but that happened very quickly and it's just got worse. You would think you lose weight, it's easier on your knees, but in my case, I lose some weight and it's harder on my knees because they lost their padding and their lubrication. I do remember in the past when I gained weight, the increase in weight and load on my knees hurt them, but I guess my ideal body fat for my knees is higher than it is now, or perhaps I just need more calories and the body fat is fine, but when I'm in a calorie deficit, they suffer. I don't know exactly. But yeah, my knees are not doing so good. They're not, uh, they're not horrible. Even a little partial tear, I wouldn't call horrible. Like if, the, if I got like full tear or if they were just like really painful, yeah, I'd say they're horrible, but they're just not good. Um, mental function, like performance, not so bad. What I mean by that is, like, if I get enough sleep, I can be awake and do everything I need to do. It's not difficult. But, it's like, my brain is not focused on retaining information or studying or whatever. So, like, I can do it. And then it's like I didn't really do it because I just don't remember it. If I'm in class, my brain wants to sleep. If I'm at home, it's like, yeah, it's difficult to focus, but the biggest thing is it's difficult to remember stuff. Um, yeah, brain not focused on remembering stuff, focused on finding food, finding fats and carbohydrates right now. Also, I got to add in that I have tried days with just protein drinks and I didn't notice it at first, but it seems like when I just have protein drinks or perhaps it's the new protein powder I got, which actually does taste really good. But the last couple days when I did just protein drinks, I did have coffee, which I don't normally have. Intestines did not feel good, like lots of gas but it wasn't so much the gas that made them uncomfortable but just like 
they just weren't feeling so good. Like, it, they needed some solid stuff inside. And I eat lots of vegetables, but vegetables don't do it for me. Like, personally, my body feels better when I have carbohydrates in me than when I have vegetables in me, despite vegetables being healthy. Strength in the gym, good. Energy in the gym, pretty good. Pumps in the gym, pretty good. Um, cardio, now that's, uh, I've been doing good with cardio, gotta take a, take it easy now that I have a torn tendon and that both my knees kind of hurt, like regardless of the torn tendon. Um, but cardio, like it goes good and all, but then, so I try to do a total of like 30, 35 minutes of jogging, or at least that's what I was doing, I increased it, but quite a few times when I would get to the end, so I would do this. I would do either like 10 minutes, then seven minutes, plus three minutes, plus five minutes, plus five minutes, and in between I would walk. Um, most recently I did 20 minutes, plus five minutes, plus three minutes, plus two minutes, plus two minutes. And it's like by the time I'm almost done with that, I am like, I don't know exactly how to put it in like I don't remember it perfectly, but I'm not feeling too good. Like, I would not push it further, like I could push it further. I'm sure I would feel worse before it actually became problematic. But it's but the only way I could describe it is that I do think that if I I don't know how far it goes like so you push, 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 you get to this point where I'm describing, and I don't know how much further you have to push and how much worse you have to feel before it actually comes to the point of passing out. Like, I almost passed out when I was younger from sprinting, because uh, we ran like three-fourths of a mile, and one guy was like tied with me for first place, and I decided, you know, I want to win, so I just pushed as hard as I could, and like, I actually, guess passed out for like a half a second but then like before I fell to the ground like I came back like I pushed the blood to my head like I'm, I don't feel like doing it right now because I got a headache today uh, but if you like tent push like you squeeze your whole body to get the blood to your head so like before I fell down I pushed the blood to my head so I didn't fall down but this is a different kind of like lightheaded it's like just kind of sick feeling and like feel that at the end of the cardio. So of course, if I just did less cardio, I wouldn't feel that. If I did more, I'd feel it more, but mentioning it because I have not felt that when doing the same cardio without the calorie restriction. Yeah, my body wants calories. I get plenty of protein. Today, no. Every other day, yes. Today I decided I'm going to save my calories on the protein for other foods um, because I have not worked out in the gym muscles for a few days, honestly, I don't remember. Brain's not working super good. I don't remember what day I last worked out on, but I've taken at least I think yesterday and the day before off, but maybe the day before 